I'm not a robot, I promise. <laughs> Profiler. Is that better? Like, profiler? <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the Firebase Pro Series. This is a series where we teach advanced topics covered by the people who help make Firebase. My name is Tyler Rockwood and I'm a site reliability engineer for the real-time database. It's just a fancy way of saying I work to keep the servers that power your database up and running. The real-time database is built to handle high traffic apps, but if you don't architect your data layout properly, you can run into problems such as slow queries, high database load, and expensive bandwidth usage. Fortunately, I have a tool that I created to help you understand what's going on in your real-time database. We call it the Real-Time Database Profiler. Today, we're going to do a deep dive into the profiler, and we're going to use it to cover a few things. We're going to learn about the metrics that it provides and what they mean, and we're going to learn how to use those metrics to identify two example problems. To understand what these metrics means, let's start by profiling a brand new empty database. In order to run the profiler, you need to install the Firebase CLI. Profiler is bundled as part of the Firebase CLI. To install it, you run npm install dash dash global Firebase tools. Once you've installed the CLI, you log in and initialize your project. I've already done all these steps, so I'm going to skip straight into profiling. So we want to profile our database. How do we do that? We want to run the command Firebase database profile. Once we run this command, what's going to happen is the profiler is going to start requesting operations from your real-time database. So the real-time database, as operations come through, it's going to be streaming what happens from each operation that's going on to the CLI. And from there, once you hit enter, the Firebase CLI is going to aggregate all of those operations into a report that's easy for you to understand. Right now, we don't have any operations that are going through. So I'm going to simulate some load real quick, and then we'll see these operations come in. So as you can see, we collected 104 operations from the profiler. And whenever we feel like we've collected enough operations, we just press Enter, and the profiler generates our report. So we hit Enter, and it, our report's generated. The report is broken up into three sections. There's the speed report, bandwidth, and then unindexed queries. The speed report is the first section. And as you can see, it's broken down into reads, writes, and broadcasts. So read speed has four different columns in this table. It has path, count, average, and permission denied. So the path and the count and the average are all what you would expect they are. It's the speed and how often these locations in the database are read. There's also a column for permission denied, which lets you know if your security rules are misconfigured or if you have apps that are making requests that they shouldn't be. Usually that's a sign that you need to either dig into your security rules or look and see if, if your app is doing reads that it shouldn't be. Write speed is similar. It's just for all the set, update, and delete operations that you do. The last section is broadcast speed. What is broadcast speed? It's the time that it takes after the initial query when data gets updated at a location for the server to process and send out those updates. So you can see here these correlate with writes and they're all processed in under a millisecond. The bandwidth report is the next section, and it is broken down into two categories, bytes downloaded from the server and bytes uploaded to the server. Downloaded bytes corresponds to reads and updates sent from the server, whereas uploaded bytes are writes that the clients are making to the server. So the bytes that we are measuring here and have captured are not a valid measure of the bandwidth bill. Your bandwidth bill includes other overheads, such as SSL overhead and HTTP headers. This is just the raw serialized JSON data that's being sent back and forth. You can see these are broken up in a very similar manner to the speed report, except that instead of having speeds, these are just the size of the data that's being sent. So you can see at test data wildcard, we've sent 12 kilobytes over 50 operations, and on average, that resulted in 220 bytes of data being sent. The next and last section of the report is unindex queries. Usually this ends up being an empty section. However, if it's not empty, it's something that you really need to draw attention to. Unindexed queries are when the our client SDKs, instead of relying on an index to query this data, the server sends all of the data at that location, and then the query gets performed on the client on device. 
these will lead to very expensive operations for you. So this is a warning here that you need to add a index at test data for the current time field. And that two of these queries happened while you were profiling. So it gives you a measure of how many times this is happening. Our SDKs also give you this warning in the console, but in case you miss it there in development, you can catch it here in the profiler as well. Now that we know what these metrics mean, let's use the profiler to look at a database in production and see if we can find any problems. But wait, you might be wondering, why are we running the profiler in production? Shouldn't that cause slowdowns and other performance issues? But no, it doesn't. We thought of that. The profiler des is designed to run in production without any overhead. It's safe to use in all situations. So let's start up a profiler and take a look at this database. So again, we run our profiling command, which is Firebase database profile. You may be asking yourself, what is this instance flag that I'm giving? That is a part of our multi DB feature and is a way to have multiple databases in the same project. I just did it to make this demo way easier to write. We just hit enter and then we're going to start profiling. You can see here we captured about 3,000 operations, and then we press enter, generate our report. So I'm looking over this report, looking for any issues. As I look through the speed report, I don't see anything that pops out to me. Everything looks like it's going on very fast. Every operation's under a millisecond and processing very quickly. So let's move down to the bandwidth report and see what's going on. Looking at the bandwidth report, everything looks okay, except for chat rooms wildcard. It looks like every operation is downloading over a megabyte of data. As you can see in the short profile that we captured that we downloaded over 200 megabytes of data at that location. That's going to add up to a very expensive bandwidth bill in the long term. So we want to go look over and see what's happening at this location. So you can see we're in our console looking at our database and the Firebase console has triggered read only in non real time mode. If it wasn't in this mode, our browser would be overwhelmed with all the data being sent. So we're looking at our, our structure and we have chat rooms and a single chat room. And then for each chat room, we have members, messages, and the name. And what's happening here is that when a user opens their app, they're looking at all of their chat rooms and they're also downloading all of the messages and all of the members for that chat room. And as you can see, there can be a lot of messages in here. So that's what's resulting in this really high bandwidth usage. So by sharing the key, we can download sections of the database that we need. For example, only the messages or only the members, as opposed to having to download all of it every time, resulting in that really large bandwidth usage that we saw in the profiler. We use the profiler to solve a problem in one database. So let's look at a different database and see if we can find any problems there. So again, we'll do our Firebase database profile. We'll choose a different instance this time. We'll collect our profile for a little bit and we'll start by looking over again the speed report. The first thing that jumps out is the read speed for metrics. It's taking over a second each time, which is way, way slower than any other profile report that we've looked at yet. So far, they've all been under a millisecond, and this one's taking a second. So clearly, there's a problem here. Let's continue to go look at the bandwidth report and see if there are any further issues there. So looking at the bandwidth report, everything looks OK. So let's move over and look at the data structure to see what's going on with the read speed. So we can see here that this database is basically all one long flat list. It's all under this metrics node, and we just have a bunch of Firebase push IDs. And under each push ID is an action that a user took, time, and user. And really all we're doing here is performing queries to get the last few actions that happened each time. Let's see if we can restructure this data to prevent having to do queries at all. So instead of having action, time, and user as fields, we want to move them in to be part of the key so that we can use them as an index. So then we can just do a read for metrics, actions, win, under a certain time frame and we'll get all of the information without needing to do a query. And we can do the same thing for time and user. So that's all for today on the Real-Time Database Profiler. If you want to learn more, leave a comment and let us know what you'd like us to cover. If you liked this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to stay up to date with all of our videos. I'm Tyler Rockwood, and thanks for stopping by the Firebase Pro Series.